Hello and welcome to the 49ers First and 10 podcast. 10 minutes of the most up-to-date 49ers news first thing in the morning. I'm your host, Brianna McDonald, and I'm joined by 49ers team reporter, Lindsay Pilares, and a special guest on today's episode, Arizona Cardinals podcaster and content coordinator, Craig Grealu. Craig, thanks for joining. My pleasure. All right, so the Cardinals had a big win on Sunday. Arizona has come really close in the first two weeks, but notched their first win of the season against the Dallas Cowboys. Craig, what are some of your biggest takeaways from that game, and how are the Cardinals coming into this week's contest against the 49ers? Well, first things is the Cardinals were able to finish. Three straight games now, they have walked into the fourth quarter with the lead, and on Sunday against the Cowboys is the first time that they were able to walk off the field with the lead, and it is a big win, and I do think it gives maybe not so much the coaches because Jonathan Gannon really downplayed even Monday the importance of that first win, the validation that everything that has been taught and coached throughout the entire offseason, training camp, preseason, is going to result in something positive as it did on Sunday. But I do think it gives a lot of the players confidence in, yes, they're being taught the right way, they're being coached the right way, and if they do what is asked of them, then yeah, you can go in and pull off the biggest upset of the weekend. And I do think that another one of those upsets would be in the would be in the offering this week because I don't think, despite what happened Sunday, I don't think there's going to be a lot of people expecting the Cardinals to go in and beat San Francisco. Yeah, two strengths will collide on Sunday. 49ers wide receiver Debo Samuel shared that the Cardinals looked very impressive running the ball against Dallas. But the 49ers only gave up 29 rushing yards against the New York Giants last week. Lindsay, what's going to be the key to stopping Arizona's run game this Sunday? Yeah, you know, I think the recipe for success is excellent defensive line play. We saw that on Thursday night football against the New York Giants, like you mentioned, minimal rushing yards allowed. So it's going to take that full effort by Nick Bosa and Cleveland Farrell and Drake Jackson setting the edge and then also the guys in the middle. So Javon Hargrave and Eric Armstead and Javon Kinlaw when he's in just working together as a unit, which honestly has been progressing so well throughout the season. Nick Bosa said that that game against the New York Giants was the best showing by the defensive line thus far. Their goal is to continue building on that. And the Arizona Cardinals certainly aren't one-dimensional, but they do rely heavily on that run game. So being able to shut that down will certainly create some havoc for Arizona's offense. And there are some new faces on the team this season for the Cardinals, including head coach Jonathan Gannon and quarterback Joshua Dobbs. Craig, what have you seen from them so far? What do they bring to the Cardinals that's new? Really, what should the 49ers be expecting? The two big additions in the offseason, one on defense and one on offense, the addition of Kaiser White, to that defensive side of the ball, someone that's familiar with Jonathan Gannon. He was with Gannon and Nick Rollis in Philadelphia. And even with the loss of Buda Baker, Kaiser White has really picked up the leadership mantle and just the emotion because it's him that is calling the defense. He's got the green dot on the helmet. So he is an extension of both Gannon and Rollis on the football field. And then on the offensive side, although he has not played a lot of offensive snaps, Wide receiver Zach Pascal, big in special teams, someone else familiar with the head coach. And again, that emotion in the locker room on and off the field. So those will be the two biggest additions. And then along the offensive line, Yelda Froholt, the starting center, has been a pleasant surprise. Came in with just four starts under his belt for his career. And there was a lot of people, myself included, that thought that they would meaning the Cardinals would bring someone else in in the offseason to kind of compete with Froholt, but that didn't happen. Froholt has been the mainstay at center and has been the anchor of that offensive line, which has allowed James Conner and everyone else to have success running the football. Nice. And Lindsay, the 49ers know how much affecting the quarterback can disrupt a game. Last week, the Cardinals defense notched 
two sacks and an interception on the Cowboys. So what is Brock Purdy up against this week? He shared that after the last couple of games that he still has a lot to work on. What are some of those things he's got to fine tune before facing the Cardinals this week? Yeah, you know, I think especially with the New York Giants, their high blitz rate certainly played a factor in all that uh, blitzing. Not so much a trademark of the Arizona Cardinals defense, but Brock Purdy has spoken at length about just continuing to build, fine tune and perfect those deep balls that he certainly wishes he had back from week three. So that's going to be a big point of emphasis. But, you know, he was careful to mention that you can't let those mistakes haunt you. You just have to continue to work at them, rep them out, practice them, and then move forward. I think that's something that is a big emphasis for him to just continue pushing forward. And he has had a lot of success. Um, You know, he is now going, I believe, 190 passes without an interception. So a pretty considerable streak for him. He's been very good at taking care of the ball. Um, So We want to see more of that moving forward as well. And this won't be Gannon's first time game planning for the 49ers offense. In fact, he served as the Philadelphia Eagles defensive coordinator in last season's NFC championship game. Craig, how could the head coach now use his Cardinals pieces to defend the 49ers offense? I think it's a good point because you look not only at this game, but the first three games against the NFC East. Again, Gannon familiar with all three of those opponent. So the head coach might have a little bit of a prep advantage with these first four games, especially knowing that the 49ers, not a lot of new faces on that 49ers offense or defense. Not that we're going to get a lot of insight from the head coach himself, but I do think it does help the prep. Obviously, it comes down to the players executing on the football field. And again, Kaiser White, familiar with the San Francisco 49ers on what they do offensively. And then just the number of players that are back for the Cardinals in their entirety with the two games last season against the 49ers. So it could, again, I don't, how much of an advantage? I do think it helps that there is some familiarity. And Lindsay, we know that the 49ers are feeling good sitting at 3-0 and to start the season, but we're still hearing from the team that they're not satisfied and they're still taking it week by week. How important is a win on Sunday for the 49ers? Yeah, you know, we heard from Locker Room on Monday. You hear cornerback Isaiah Oliver just kind of speak, I think, to the approach that the entire team takes for divisional games is that they've got a little star next to them, right? Every game is important, but these NFC West matchups really have deep playoff implications, obviously still super early in the year. You never know how things are going to play out, but the more of these games that you can bank a win on, just sets you up for success later in the season. So certainly a matchup that the 49ers are absolutely not taking lightly and really are up for the challenge, especially seeing the success of the Arizona Cardinals in week three. And before we close out today's episode, let's run through some keys to success for both teams. Craig, what are the Cardinals' keys to success in week four? Well, what was the key to success in week three was offensively staying out of third and long. That was a big issue the first two games so if the Cardinals on offense can stay in third and manageable and keep things interesting as far as the 49ers defense on their toes don't become predictable as an offense and then defensively it always comes to stopping the run of any opponent but the 49ers provide so many different weapons whether it's running back wide receiver tied in and that's going to be the biggest challenge for this Cardinals defense is trying to zero in on stopping the run and As difficult as it is, because he hasn't been beat in the regular season, but make Brock Purdy beat you and get him to throw the ball a little bit more than I think anyone on the 49ers coaching staff wants Purdy to throw. So that would be my two on either side of the ball. And Lindsay, what are you outlining as the 49ers keys to success against the Cardinals? You know, I think it's a couple of things we already touched upon. Um, Just some excellent run defense, right? Arizona had a lot of success in their ground game against the Dallas Cowboys. So that's going to be a big point of emphasis for the defense. On offense, it's Brock Purdy taking care of the ball, being precise and accurate, which he has been. Uh, So continuing that. And then also for the team as a whole in all three phases, just cleaning up some of the 
penalties that have incurred over the last few weeks, cleaning that up and just making sure that those mistakes don't extend drives for the opponent. I think that's like universally going to be a big thing for them. All right. Well, that will do it for today. Thank you so much, Lindsay and Craig, for joining me in this episode. Don't forget to follow First and Ten on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Turn on the notifications so you're in the know when we post any breaking news updates. And thank you, Faithful, for tuning in. Yeah.